Assalamu alaikum. Our topic today will be about the anatomy of the humerus. Humerus is a long bone composed anatomically of three areas, three anatomical areas. The upper part of the humerus composed of the head and tuberosities of the humerus. Middle part of the humerus of the shaft of the humerus the lower part of the humerus. And the anterior surface of the humerus anatomically speaking the upper part is composed of head of the humerus which is hemispherical in shape articulate with the glenoid fossa of the scapula to form shoulder joint. Hemispherical means nosophcoid. Next to the head of the humerus small constricted area called anatomical neck of the humerus. Next to the anatomical neck of the humerus in the upper part is expanding part which is called tuberosities of the humerus which are two tuberosities lateral tuberosity called greater tuberosity medial area called lesser tuberosity in between the two tuberosities there is a groove called intertubercular groove and this groove is related to the tendon of the long head of biceps muscle so it's some books may be called as biceptal groove this groove has two edges one is on lateral side called lateral lip the other on its medial side called medial lip of the biceptal groove of the humerus next to the tuberosities the second neck of the humerus is called surgical neck of the humerus which is the area that lies between tuberosities and the shaft of the humerus takes its name from being as an area common for fracture of the humerus and since fracture in this area it require medical intervention by surgery so it is called surgical neck of humerus Surgical neck of humerus it is very important from anatomical point of view that is lies in direct relation and contact on its medial side with the axillary nerve and since the area is a common area for fracture so this area is a common site for injury and damage of the axillary nerve which was uh, resulted in uh, abnormal function of the deltoid muscle that's supplied by the axillary nerve. Next to the surgical neck is the shaft of the humerus. And the shaft of the humerus is long, cylindrical in shape, smooth surface on its anterior view on its posterior view possess a groove spiral in shape called spiral groove of the humerus this groove is very important from clinical point of view
because it lodges an important nerve that's the radial nerve so some books may call this groove as radial groove as the shaft of the humerus goes downward it will form two edges on both sides medial and lateral side these edges one is called medial the other is called lateral supracondylar ridge next to the shaft of the humerus is the lower part of the humerus which is expanding part more or less triangular in shape from its lateral side bounded or borders one is called medial the other is called lateral supracondylar ridges its lower part is expanding forming medial and lateral condyle of the humerus tip of each condyle is called medial and lateral epicondyle of the humerus the lower part is the articular part of the humerus which will articulate with the radius and ulna to form the elbow joint composed of two main parts medial pulley shaped part called trochlea which will articulate with the trochlear fossa of the ulna flattened lateral part capitellum which will articulate with the head of the radius at the elbow joint above trochlea anteriorly a depression called coronoid fossa above the capitellum anteriorly smaller depression called radial fossa this is the lower end of the humerus from anterior view medial and lateral supracondylar ridge medial epicondyle lateral epicondyle trochlea capitellum coronoid fossa radial fossa from the posterior view the lower end of the humerus it has a large triangular depression above the trochlea called olecranon fossa during extension full extension the olecranon process of the ulna it will rest on this fossa regarding the muscles that attach to the humerus they are divided into muscles that attach to the anterior surface of the humerus and these groups of muscles summarized as muscles attached to the tuberosities of the humerus for the greater tuberosity supraspine lesser tuberosity subscapularis insertion greater tuberosity supraspinatus insertion muscles attached around the biceptal groove to the lateral lip 
insertion of pectoralis major muscle to the medial lip, insertion of latissimus dorsi muscle, and insertion of teres major muscle to the mid shaft anteriorly two muscles laterally at the area which is called deltoid tuberosity you can see the insertion of deltoid muscle medially insertion of coracobrachialis muscle the lower part lower half of the anterior surface of the shaft of the humerus is occupied by origin of brachialis muscle the lower part of the humerus muscles attachment are two groups muscles attach to the medial sides and these are superiorly above the origin of pronate arteries muscle below at the medial epicondyle is the common flexor tendon or common flexor origin which means a common tendon for multiple muscles of the forearm laterally to the lateral supracondylar ridge to the upper part of the lateral supracondylar ridge is the origin of brachioradialis muscle to the lower part of the lateral supracondylar ridge is the origin of extensor carpi radialis longus muscle to the lateral epicondyle a common another common tendon or common origin which is the common extensor tendon this means it is a common tendon for multiple muscles which are extensor muscles of the forearm as compared to the muscles that are attached to the common flexor origin these are group of muscles that are actually flexor muscles of the forearm second group of muscles that are attached to the humerus these are the muscles that attach to the posterior surface of the humerus and these muscles are muscles attached to the upper part of the posterior surface of the humerus which are infraspinatus muscle insertion to the upper part of the greater tuberosity lower to it the insertion of teres minor muscle to the shaft of the humerus around the spiral groove two important origin above the spiral groove is the origin of the lateral head of triceps muscle below to the spiral groove is the origin of the medial head of triceps muscle in the lower part of the humerus a small muscle takes its origin called anconius muscle which is a muscle of the forearm and can you can see that the insertion of the deltoid muscle which is extending here from the anterior surface to the uh, posterior surface of the humerus at the region of the deltoid tuberosity thank you